Excerpt is entering a new level of development. How much money do you think this will bring to investors? Write answers in the comments. While the cryptocurrency world awaits the official outcome of the judicial fight between the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and Ripple, the blockchain company's community has opted to celebrate an earlier triumph this weekend, specifically the proper party, which took place on September 30, drew not only XRP and Ripple enthusiasts, but also people closely involved with the ecosystem and the lawsuit such as Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, to David Schwartz, legal experts Jeremy Hogan and John E. Deaton, and many others. Garlinghouse tweeted a few photos with the crowd gathered outside the venue just before the party, adding that the event was a celebration of collaborative success and a reminder to the sec that court decisions matter and that progress is worth fighting for. In a video shared in an X post by CryptoLaw on September 30, Garlinghouse said during his speech at the celebration that it was this village beat the bully, referring to the c p and Ripple community and its stand against the regulator. Previously, CryptoLaw shared an article written by Frank Francone, a Centennial Institute policy fellow and a California attorney, who stated that the sexy central argument failed almost completely under judicial scrutiny, harming a lot of innocent people in the process, not just the defendants in the case. As CryptoLaw founder John E. Deaton noted in an X post published on September 28, in response to Francone's claims in the essay, headlined The SEC is Not the King, 75 IG investors, users, developers, and small businesses have been screaming the above for three years, he said. Meanwhile, lawyer Bill Morgan emphasized the SEC's arbitrary enforcement, adding that Mark Berger was pro-crypto when it came to Ethereum Lubin but while Deputy Director of the Division of Enforcement sued Ripple. More recently, on October 1, Jeremy Hogan emphasized that the SEC attempted a similar maneuver with gold in the early 1980s, when inflation was high and gold was the investment, and that the court stopped it at the time. Ripple's chief legal officer, Clo, Stuart Alderotti, has joined the chorus of those expressing dissatisfaction with SEC Chair Gary Jeansler's appearance before Congress. As Ripple continues its legal struggle with the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, over the categorization of XRP, Alderotti examines Gensler's statements during the hearing, notably his evasive replies on the subject of securities under use of Russ law. According to Alderotti, Gensler seemed to smugly evade question after question, which irritated numerous members of Congress. The Ripple Clo, on the other hand, emphasizes a specific moment when Rep. Richie Torres of New York's 15th Congressional District tried to put Gensler on the spot. Rip. Torres highlighted concerns throughout the hearing about the sex's wide understanding of a investment contract, which seems to include whatever the agency sees proper. Torres especially questioned the sex chair on its use of the concept to classify practically all cryptocurrencies as securities, a move that Ripple and Coinbase have strongly opposed. Rip. Torres cited a recent study by six prominent legal experts, including a Yale University professor, that found no Supreme Court judgment has ever treated a scheme without a real contract as an investment contract as an investment contract. When he questioned Gensler whether there had been any earlier Supreme Court instances in which an investment relationship was held to be such in the absence of an express contract, the SEC chair's answer was evasive. Gensler elected not to respond directly, instead referring to the sex lawyers, who are now engaged in pending legal proceedings. Rep. Torres called Gensler's dodge baffling, given that the investment contract concept is the foundation of the sex's legal proceedings against cryptocurrency. Related firms, it remains to be seen if other cryptocurrency firms engaging in legal battles with the sec would follow the congressman's logic in future court trials. As the Ripple, SEC fight continues, the SEC chair's testimony emphasizes the need for clarity and uniformity in the categorization of digital assets in the U.S. legal framework. The unique viewpoint created here provides light on the criticism made at SEC chair Gary Gensler by exposing his evasive comments and challenges to support the SEC's broader definition of an investment contract. The SEC filed an interlocutory appeal with the court after Judge Annalisa Torres ruled that programmatic XRP sales did not constitute as securities. 
This meant that the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, did not agree with the verdict, and although the court accepted the interlocutory appeal, pro excerpt lawyer John Deaton termed the action ludicrous as he dismantled the sex's case. Deaton discussed the sex's interlocutory appeal in a piece titled The Irony of Interlocutory Appeal. The essay, which was published on the Crypto Law website on Thursday, September 28, outlines how the appeal filing might wind up favoring Ripple. The pro XRP lawyer notes that Judge Torres' decision to approve the request for appeal was anticipated, and the argument was that such an appeal would allow the judge to clarify her reasons for deciding in favor of Ripple. Empower oversight whistleblowers as research. A rigorous watchdog organization has spearheaded another incisive Freedom of Information Act, FOIA, endeavor. This strategy is geared on clarifying Jake Clayton's interactions with a pantheon of parties considered crucial to the sex's often controversial Bitcoin enforcement approaches. Clayton's tenure as the sex's most powerful chair, which lasted from May 4, 2017 to December 23, 2020, included a number of landmark occurrences. At the forefront was Clayton's declaration of Bitcoin's non-security status, which was echoed by other tub figures about Ether. Bill Hyman delivered his notorious lecture in which he claimed that ETH is decentralized and so does not qualify as a security. Hyman's speech disregarded the advice of other authorities, as revealed in the legal dispute between Ripple and the SEC. These statements have a significant amplifying impact on the value dynamics of these digital assets. This rising trend, however, was disrupted by the SEC's unexpected legal onslaught against Ripple, which questioned the XRP token status as a security. This dispute, when paired with Clayton's later affiliation with One River Asset Management, a hedge fund with a sole portfolio emphasis on Bitcoin and Ether, fueled speculation. Among these swings, Empower Oversight's press release stated unequivocally, Empower Oversight has submitted a new Freedom of Information Act, AYA, request seeking communications between Jay Clayton regarding the agency's ostensible misalignment in cryptocurrency enforcement strategies. Empower Oversight tries to dramatically widen the nexus of persons possibly enmeshed inside Clayton's contact environment in the convoluted build of this newly minted FOIA petition, aimed at Raymond Macinerny, the sex's main FOIA custodian. The list, whose names range from Jasmine Burgess to John D'Agostino et al., attempts to crystallize any underlying conflicts of interest entwined within Mr. Clayton's sex stewardship. The whole issue has not gone ignored by cryptocurrency stakeholders. When I first raised the huge conflicts of interest, I was called a conspiracy theorist by many in the industry, said renowned Proxerp attorney Johnny Deaton via XEU, previously Twitter. Empower Oversight found emails demonstrating Hyman violated 18 UC 208 on many occasions with Clayton's full knowledge and implicit permission. Is Empower Oversight a conspiracy theorist as well? Let's not forget, Clayton was the only commissioner who saw and read the draft speech before it was delivered, Deaton said. Hinman did not send a copy to Hester Pierce. That's correct, crypto. Mom was not informed about the most important speech in crypto history. Ripple is determined to win the legal fight with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC. As a result, the corporation just engaged a well-known lawyer to assist in that aim. James K. Fila, a defense lawyer and former federal prosecutor, revealed on X Twitter that Rahul Mookie would defend Ripple and its CEO Brad Garlinghouse in their current dispute with America's securities regulators regulator. Mookie has extensive expertise in the area, having worked as an assistant United States attorney from 2010 until 2016. He eventually became a lawyer and partner at the multinational legal firm Cleary Gottlieb Steen Hamilton Legal Firm, Cleary Gottlieb Steen Hamilton LP. Mookie has overseen major cases including financial and tax fraud, public corruption, cybercrime, money laundering, and organized crime during the last decade. The legal conflict began in December 2020, when the SEC filed a complaint alleging ripple of trading billions of dollars in XRP as a securities without registering with the commission. In the years that followed, the intense struggle progressed through many phases as both entities launched bullets at one another. However, Ripple seems to have a significant edge since, in July, a U.S. court found that most of its XR sales did not represent an offer of investment contract.